ဟိုခင်တောင်ကပ်စလာစင်ပြေတံပြေလာတနိခွာတော့ဟောက်စံစံပါတံတဲ့တံပြေဖြင့်တယ်လနမဲ့ဘဟောမလကိုစံစံပ
ยุทธะตันเดลาเตนลัมเมกิชลับสังกิเตปะตะทุยอดิยุทธะเตตาวะลาเตนเจรุงตุรุลัมเมทุกิรสัมสานุงเงนอลัมเมยอนเตสัม
when things are going well, we tend to think that it's because we did something right. And we think, oh, things are going well. I must be really good at this, or I did this, and I did it alone. And similarly, when things go poorly, when we're unhappy, we think, why me? Why is this happening to me? So, this, uh, the attitude being taught here is how to work with our responses to these situations in a different way. There's a Tibetan saying about the sort of attitude that we normally have about how we tend to take things for granted. And it's when riding on an even plane, you sing, tra-la-la. But as soon as you go over a cliff, you shout, help me, Guru Padma. <laughs> and that's the way we are. We're carefree until something goes wrong. And as long as things are going right, then we feel, well, things should be going right because I'm the greatest person in the world, so I must have done it. So there are, there's another way to look at things. When you're happy, regarded as your guru's compassion means, think, if things are going well for you, this is the blessing, directly or indirectly, of my guru and the three jewels. And this is not something you're imagining. This is actually the case. Because happiness is a result of virtuous actions, which means that you were probably inspired to engage in virtuous actions by your guru or the three jewels, even if those virtuous actions occurred in previous lives. So in a very real sense, it is due to the kindness or compassion of your guru and the three jewels. Now when you're miserable, instead of thinking, why me? First of all, remind yourself, right at this moment, there are countless other beings throughout this world and this universe who are experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing now. In fact, probably much, much worse. So I'm not being singled out for this. Secondly, remind yourself that suffering and misery are the results of previous actions. So if you're miserable, it's because in a previous lifetime you did something. But because you know, because you have the information to know how to respond to it in, a, in an appropriate manner, it becomes an opportunity for you. So if you think, may my suffering take the place of the suffering that would otherwise be experienced by all other beings, whether it's sickness physical pain or mental misery or uh, external disasters or problems, whatever it is, if you think, may this suffering on my part take the place of the suffering that would be otherwise experienced by countless other beings, because of the interdependence of all things and because of the fact that your attitude has become, instead of selfish, obsession with your own suffering has become a benevolent, even altruistic concern for the suffering of others, then that will cause the purification of whatever obscuration or imprint within you has led to that suffering. So while it may not literally be the case that the guru's compassion caused your suffering, the guru's compassion taught you how to respond to it appropriately. Whether things are good or bad, regard them as your guru's qualities and carefully make all your behavior accord with dharma. Especially make all your behavior accord with dharma means not only to behave well and responsibly, but it means to use such situations to strengthen your aspiration to help others. When things go well, to think, 
may all beings enjoy even better than this. May all beings be even happier than I am right now. And when things go poorly, may no being ever have to experience uh, this kind of suffering. May my suffering serve instead of all of theirs. So, ตั้งบ่ก็ตั้มตั้มเปยินาบะเตดตันเดเกเอ่อตั้มบ่เดยอมาริสกุซงกุซงเดเกเดยอมาริสโอ้ตั้งเนี่ยตั้งเนี่
ยันน่ะยันตาเสด็จตาบ่ซ่องยอมอยู่กับสละงานน่ะถึงกันตันเกย์ตันกินเนี่ยสิ่งตาบ่จุละซ่องซ่องยันน่ะทับจากกับจาก
uh, dealing with the same the same issue here. Mari Kibu Mato Dao me, you may be Pamato, and then me, you may only charge you a yemeto, no in Mato, Keta, Keta, Kawa me, my Pale, here, Sanje me. To continue from where we left off in the song, there is no enemy other than ignorance. There is nothing that we need to overcome other than the ignorance, which is our false belief in a self. There is no help other than unaltered awareness. There is no remedy or solution to ignorance other than learning to sustain uh, unaltered natural awareness. Therefore, there is nothing to do other than remaining undistracted, undistracted from unaltered awareness. Therefore, there is no obstruction or samsara other than distraction. There is no tranquil Buddhahood other than no distraction, the absence of distraction. Methodically abandon your faults. Always look within yourself to discover what your biggest problems are and seek to overcome them. Energetically accomplish all good thoughts and deeds. Every good thing that you think of doing, do it. Always be very kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself means protect yourself from suffering by making careful choices in what you choose to do. Ninja <laughs> Magic Buddha to Seva go somewhere, you can't attain it. Then it's also gay, Namata, Pamata, Yendu, Tamjela, Seva Pango, and I was in the Marie, Seva ten the Gorings, Seva the Karchim Borings. That our Karchim Boy and I am that you, John Dola, and they sending around the Jungle Yorsena, seven Yendu Dabo Jena, then it take a Yendu Tela Hajanke, Yancha Chimon Dabo Goni. Don't Red Lam, 
ตาสอสอลมันเต็มตาวจีนน่ะตางาราวเจอเกสอสิเกวกันตะเกตคานิสินน่ะตาเซเวกาสุลาเนตางกอบเกยอตางเนตาติเดวามายุงบากิเน
ਤੇ ਫਰਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਤੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਫਰਦੇ ਨਾ continuing from where we left off the next line says take care of your loved ones nobly with dharma some people have the misapprehension that uh the dharma uh teaches because it talks about uh freedom from attachment that it uh, tells one that one should neglect uh one's family uh, or friends those one loves but that's not the point the point is rather to extend that love simply beyond those we ordinarily love but certainly not to neglect those we already love however we may need to look at how we uh act or how we articulate our love for our families and friends because there tends to be a great deal of attachment which in this case means um self-based uh attachment in our love for others based on the identification of them as accessories to the self it can become um a complicated situation where we find ourselves instinctively demonizing anyone who in our perception interferes with those we love or in any way um seems to threaten uh, our relationship uh, with them and it is that that needs to be uh, examined So when he says take care of your loved ones nobly what is meant by nobly here means by preserving that nobility of conduct which is harmlessness nonviolence beyond simply the extreme of physical violence but nonviolence of mind so that for example if someone um in some way interferes with or is in competition with someone we love instead of becoming inst- reflexively or reactively aggressive toward them remember that aggression and anger uh, contradict dharma that acting in an aggressive way uh, harboring aggression toward others is not the path uh, to awakening so this is really about how to um care for and love our families and other dependents in a way that does not contravene dharma so in other words our love for our families should not cause us to hate others but then there is the further question of what about those that we don't know or don't particularly love those we call the unknown or enemies So therefore in the next line he writes meditate on compassion for enemies as for your mother now this the line can be interpreted in two ways it can be as for your mother or like their mother uh, and you can there's there's value to both interpretations from she said usually in mundane society once we identify someone as an enemy depending upon the terms of our enmity whether it's a competitor in in a business or um a sworn enemy in warfare we seek to uh, either overcome or actually destroy them utterly in either case what is happening is that once we identify somebody as our enemy they're no longer us they're them and therefore uh we discard them from the list of those who must be protected they are outside the fence of those we care for they are therefore expendable but the notion 
that it is acceptable to not care for anyone, let alone acceptable to uh, attempt to destroy another person, uh, is born from Clatius. And this type of uh, malice is not the path uh, to liberation and omniscience. Well, how then are we to view and respond to a people who oppose us? And this is where one interpretation, like their mother, uh, comes, comes to the fore. And then the, the other one, as their mother, or, uh, or as, for, as for your mother, is, is another way. If you think of yourself, when a mother's child misbehaves or uh, acts out, the mother is concerned for the child because they recognize that something is wrong. Something is causing the child to be unhappy. In the same way, when someone, and this is assuming that the person that we identify as an enemy is actually doing something or has actually done something to cause us to... to to uh, ascribe them as such. If it's totally our projection, then it's just our, our thing. If somebody is doing something aggressive to us, it is because they are overpowered by their clashes. And it is actually the cause of that person's action is not actually that person, by which we mean their volition. It is the klesha. The klesha is not really intrinsic to that person. If it were intrinsic to that person, it would be unchangeable. That person would always have that same klesha, that same thought in mind. And we know that's not the case from our own experience. So it follows, therefore, that the klesha that is causing that person to become our enemy is changeable and is therefore, in a sense, extrinsic to the person. So the person is not really our enemy. The enemy, if there is one, is the klesha that has overcome that person. And we know this because we know enemies can become friends and friends can become enemies simply because a klesha has changed, like the weather. Well, if the problem is the klesha, if the person's klesha is the real enemy, then do we want to support it or do we want to eliminate it? We want to eliminate it. If we respond aggressively to the aggression of another person, we fuel or feed the fire of their aggression. And the longer the situation of mutual aggression continues, the longer uh, and stronger, that fire will burn. But if you want a fire to go out, all you have to do is deprive it of fuel. And eventually, the fire will go out once its fuel is exhausted. So in the same way, if you do not respond to the aggression of others with aggression, there are aggression, which is not intrinsic to the person, but is temporary, uh, will uh, disappear like a fire going out, at which point the person whom we may have previously labeled an enemy can become a friend. The second meaning, as, for your, as, as you would have compassion for your mother, refers to the additional reflection that in a, in a very long-term sense, each and every one of these beings, regardless of how they may be acting toward us in this life, has been our mother in countless previous lives, which is an, an, an extremely long-term view of the changeability of relationships. The person may be our enemy for much of this life, although as we've seen that can change, but certainly uh, they were our mother and we were theirs uh, in countless times in previous lives. The next line says, stop denigrating the praiseworthy and praising the unworthy. 
This refers to the situation where we praise somebody falsely because we like them and denigrate someone who is praiseworthy because we dislike them. Because we regard somebody who is really praiseworthy as them and not us, we refuse to praise them and we denigrate them. And on the other hand, because we regard somebody who is unworthy of praise as us and not them, we praise them. So in other words, stop favoritism. And also stop harming anyone, good or bad. Regardless of whether they are praiseworthy or blameworthy, stop harming, stop hurting people. If you can, help even your enemies. Never do anything to harm anyone. Always call your mind to witness. This means that we know, deep down, if we're willing to look, what our motivation is, what we're really doing. We may be able to fool other people, but we, if we are honest with ourselves, we will know what, what our true intentions are. Change your deeds of body and speech by changing how you think. The things we say and do are because of the way we think. So if we want to change how we talk and how we act, we need to change how we think. The Chupeke Yonde, Chabat and Pawa de Teddy. Junde Sengentella, two Namda Yasua Yomaris. Ya Pombo, Lachenke Junde, no Nayadong. Ma Kanda Sosi Kyo Chungyong Chigi Junde, no Nayadong. So Gazambo so Nayadong, de Tella, so so la Sosuke, Leg and Devil, the ten day younger, Mato Chigi. Tell a lost your big example and your big endeavor, Nambal and some big endeavor singing the Yomari. Then Medu Kapsula, that's so in the La Coran so on Tazula, Rang is seven of Pambons of Sundawa, Nunk Kalasunda Pemon Nunk Rang is seven of Pambons of Sundawa, and then Karchambore. Rangi Rana Chevat Gogri is in the Sungu Yoris, Rana Ranti Chevat. Tay in the Kausala, Rang Dipa make a huge chamboja sa, Sambo make a hamago a che, so so ke, Chepat of Hub, Chibu Tambaji, Dondoji, Tamna, Tap Jogris, Tenny, Tap Jogri, Tap Togri, Meparabungo, Cortogris. Then I am so sick. Same thing, Tilla. Ya, Tang and the Nedge Java in the Tang at Tarji may be a legend, and I'm Gula Yoa, some but I will get some of the younger than Mato. Oh, I chess are not sorry. Young Kaya me, Conatanga, Nanda me are some begin to hit the tower in the social social young to one. They end the castle that I chew by Yanda in a day young to get go with it. That thing I in a Nanak, Lunga is on the tone. Care, shirt up to the care parapol, a zambo lap to the Gava carezo to the deba care pan to the pony. That carriage Johnson and Java mea, some becky corner, so sick, so so the Jaja Jasam becky, ye say you to batch exert them. Then it tell us, sang yet Tom Jet, eh? Corner on a tanneg to some sazic rankings. Just on Saturday, Ranking, Red Saturday, Jim Tenna Ten, he shake a young dainty, for a sausage jula, Jeff, Matso Water, Mitchell Water, Nello Tom, Matsoba, Jim Tenna, your marriage, for the ranking, quarantine, Nello Tay, Chin up the social and younger day, say in the cups of luck, the near Cora Semna, Tessam, the Union Double. Tawanyin Mogova, one at Tanegi, Tinchik, Nello Kana, Tokayinaya, then Lola Popa Yoba, 
युवा मेपा देव या देवा ने देवा ल कोने कोन फेवा डाबते तेंदे यों थोपरे दाते सामना जाया ते खिला के घर से मोरे ने If you um, want to become an authentic practitioner of Dharma, you need to become uh, uh, utterly uh, transparent. As transparent as a crystal ball or a, uh, pla a pane of glass. Because um, an authentic practitioner is someone um, who makes no distinctions between what they really are and what they claim, pretend uh, to be. We cannot deceive the imprints of our own actions. We may be able to fool others, but we cannot avoid the results of our actions. And we could pretend to be much better than we are. It is quite possible to learn how to um, look even like a holy being and claim to be a holy being or make others through inference believe that you're a holy being. And you could fool quite a number of people uh, for a while. But in the end, you will only be haunted by your own knowledge of the terrible discrepancy between what you pretend to be and what you really are. In contrast with that, a practitioner needs to be transparent. We need to be hiding nothing. We need to be able to say to ourselves, I've done my best with body, speech, and mind to help others and to practice Dharma. I've done my best to avoid harming others, and I therefore have no significant regrets. <clears throat> Only this kind of um, openness, transparency, and honesty is conducive to the achievement of omniscient Buddhahood, within which there are no partitions or obstructions or limitations or hidden compartments. And so the kind of compartmentalization that goes with deception and public image and self-marketing and so forth um, contradicts the very uh, root and essence uh, of the path to awakening. Especially significant in this regard is the last line on page two. Always call your mind to witness. We should never believe our press. People may think better of us than we really are. Um, we've all been taught in our education how to put the, would we say, best foot forward? But deep down, we know, each of us, the truth about ourselves. And we need to remember that that is who we really are. And above all, not deceive ourselves, but also make no attempt to deceive others. So. <laughs> che so so sa pe ke tamba na cha jo se me ke tamba sa wa nga ji tam te da tu do kan ga so ri ke do so me ke so so me yo de ta che cha wa de kare go wa de se na tu ku ke cha tam ta tu la ta pe na ni to ra ja la so pe ke so ta tu la de ni pe na so ta so ri ke do la so wa de Yon 
ဆောဝလဆုံးကြပါတာဘုရင်တီကိုတွေပြန်နာဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆဆ
in which we would classify the teachings and vehicles of the Buddha as the teachings the Buddha gave um, in, in the form of one or another of the three kayas. So according to that presentation, it is taught that the Buddha taught the causal vehicles um, in the form of the Nirmanakaya and the resultant vehicle of uh, Vajrayana in the form of uh, uh, the Sambhogakaya and the vehicle beyond cause and result, the great perfection, uh, in the form of the Dharmakaya. So being that the Buddha taught all of this, how do we practice all of this or integrate all of this at once? Well, starting with the outside, starting with how we behave, which is a matter of externals, because how we behave is largely how we affect others, how we interact with others, and so on. So in your external conduct, accord with the Nirmanakaya's commands. The Nirmanakaya refers to the Buddha in the Nirmanakaya form of Buddha Shakyamuni. And Buddha Shakyamuni's commands or dictates what the Buddha taught was primarily what is called the pratimoksha, or the discipline of individual liberation. So therefore, the second line says, the precious pratimoksha is the ground of all qualities. So, however we choose to live, our a lifestyle must in some way accord with the Buddha's teachings. And this uh, external discipline, how we relate to others in society and so forth, is indispensable. Now, if you ask, well, how do great uh, bodhisattvas practice this, bodhisattvas who have achieved the bhumis or levels, they act in such a way that they're actually keeping the pratimoksha uh, in, in a very, uh, in an even better way than ordinary beings do. And such bodhisattvas on such levels are really, as the traditional analogy goes, like lotus flowers who can grow out of a swamp and yet are unstained by it. If you want to know about that, um, then you could read uh, uh, Kenjin Mipam's, uh, the, what's it called, The Eight Great Bodhisattvas? The Bodhisattva book? Yeah, I can't remember. I translated it, but I can't remember what we called it. In the, I, think, I think we called it... Anyway, it's, it's the stories of the eight great Bodhisattvas, Manjushri, Chenrezig, Vajrapani, and so on. Um, and um, so if you read about that, it deals with how these Bodhisattvas actually uh, act. I think it's just called the eight Bodhisattvas. Anyway. And then... He says, in your internal cultivation, so in your inner practice, accord with this Sambhogakaya's teaching. The teaching of the Sambhogakaya is the teaching of the Vajrayana. So he says, with inviolate samaya, know your aggregates and elements as deities. Now, to know your aggregates and elements as deities means to recognize that in their very nature, the five aggregates or five skandhas are the five male Buddhas and the five elements are the five uh, female Buddhas. In short, to um, cultivate an awareness that everything you see uh, is divine, that everything you hear uh, is mantra, and that every thought that arises within your mind uh, is the display or expression of wisdom. Uh, this is obviously somewhat profound. Um, I, it's my duty to explain this. I'm simply repeating the words and the implication of the words in the song. I don't think this is something that is easy for us to approach. Then he turns to the secret aspect of cultivation. And secret here means we're starting from the outside and going inward. So outwardly, is how we behave. Inwardly is how we practice. Secretly is how we're motivated. And therefore he says, secretly never be without bodhicitta. Bodhicitta is called secret here because it is the, uh, the very life force, the very essence of the path, regardless of vehicle. 
There are lots of ways we can subdivide the Buddha's teachings into various vehicles and various levels and so forth. But the essence of all of them is bodhicitta. A path with bodhicitta uh, is like a living body. A body with a brain, a body with a heart. A body that's actually inhabited by a being that has a mind. Any path of any vehicle without bodhicitta is like a dead body. There's no person there anymore. So, beyond even the issue of sutra or tantra and outer and inner, the most important thing is bodhicitta. And above and beyond anything else, we should seek to cultivate bodhicitta. For example, as taught by Shantideva in the Bodhicharavatara. And of course, it's intimidating when you first begin to study it and attempt to practice it. But as is said, there is nothing you can't do if you try. And if you actually really intend to cultivate bodhicitta, uh, you will be able uh, to do so. In a sense, we have no choice, because the alternative to cultivating bodhicitta will leave our path uh, as a dead path, the corpse of a path, and will leave our practice as nothing more than the mantras recited by a parrot, who is simply repeating the sounds it's heard without any understanding or much effect. And then, uh, Chechen Bawe Dorje writes, very secretly, accord with the Dharmakaya's teaching, the great perfection. That means, in your view or outlook, accord with the teaching that your nature is and always has been unchanging perfection. Perfection in the sense of completeness your nature already possesses all positive attributes. There's nothing to be added to it. And flawlessness. There is nothing intrinsic in the nature uh, that needs to be removed from it. With external, internal, alternate, those three go together. And expanse and awareness, those two go together. All indivisible. Cultivate without error the profound instructions of your guru. And these two lines indicate how to combine everything before into one cohesive uh, system uh, of practice. ลับจ๋าเลยครับเพราะฉะนั้นเชื่อไปอย่างได้จะโกกอยู่นะสงฆ์ได้จะจุ่มเส้นเราเสร็จเชื่อไปอย่างได้จะโกกอยู่นะส
ten dabo maji kamcha maji kamcha maji sem dan dewa mi zumi long is sabur kova das ta ti gara song ya dan de sadi tan de tam chot do be khota chu ta tan ni song de tam chot do be ke khoran khota chu ni ni chu je ki chawa la so ba yong se do ba tam ki pang ni de ni ye ke to pong ye she ra na te ni ma che ne yamba re do ये तीन सेन देंगो में डाम शुद्धां इन्हों भी आतीं जे सेल चौपर तो ये तीन कौन जे थान्यर चौप में ने शोगे तो में ये तीन ठोर तो गो ने कब ये तीन नावा नाते ने शिवा तातु देवा यौन तो पे संबा कंबा चला दोनातर नाम के ये लचाने चीन डोस यंत्र डोप जंग सांबे छोटूला ना होर ना होर इस दो ना होर मचे हिंदू में ये मर सब नाम के जो में ये लचान दो ये पारिंग ने चुजी चंग बो कामा बना रो डिम्बिचर Guru Chanap Sing Zong Vene Su Ta Chorak Sing Zong Nang 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 Pa Jo Ke Pung Ba Pe Do Je Te Hyat Je Tam Ba Ye La Kang De Ne Nang Jor Lam Pe To La Ba Pa Mo Yen Te Che Ki Nyam Se Nen Ba Shio Sa Wa Da Ka Pen Da Ta Te Che Song Nang Ta Te Yau Che Gun Pa Ta Song Yau Nang De Then the, the song returns to a mode of um, advice. The next line says, don't desire rank, it's empty space. Um, and this refers to, the, you know, rank means um, position, high rank or high position. And um, a position is a location uh, in space. So the position is just a uh, one bit of empty space as opposed to another empty space. And because a position is a location in space, there's no end of how high you could want to get. Ramshi said, for example, you could become so arrogant that you make them build you a throne on top of the space needle, <laughs> but you could still look up and see more sky above you, and then you'd have to have one built on a satellite or something. <laughs> So don't desire rank, it's empty space. It's clear, Ramshe said, from, we can infer from the, the recurring theme of things like this that in his request for this song, Karma Dulwa said, I want to be a real practitioner. Teach me how to be a real Dharma practitioner, not a fake, you know, who just wants to look good. Te teach me how to really do it. And so we can infer the question from the answer, which is if you really want to practice dharma, then don't desire rank. It's empty space. Similarly, he says, don't desire fame. It's a vanishing echo. Fame is very much like an echo. You say something where there's an echo, you hear it back, and then it's gone. In the same way, fame is just noise. It vanishes quickly. Don't desire comfort. It's like drinking salt water. Salt, drinking salt water, of course, is counterproductive. The more you drink, the thirstier uh, you become. And the desire for comfort is like that. 
because the more comfortable you try to be, the more comfortable you need to be, and it's endless. Don't harbor great desire in your mind. It's like the invisible wind moving the grass. Decide to accomplish holy dharma now. Give up mundane companions, ordinary friends and society. Rely on wisdom, self-appearance. So cultivate the company of pure appearances as opposed to impure projections. Mundane food never satisfies no matter how much we stuff our cheeks. Enjoy the food of samadhi in even placement, in meditation. Mundane clothing will not warm us in the cold hells. Warm yourself with the supreme heat of chandali, the practice of chandali, the first of the six dharmas. Tie up the ends of mundane appearances. Tie up the ends of mundane appearances means that the projections we make on reality based on our ambition and our concern with this life are uh, endless. And also, um, they are like um, the, an unraveling thread in, in the garment of our practice. So it's like saying, hem your garment so it doesn't unravel through your projections. Wish for rest in the ultimate bliss of peace as the thirsty wish for water. How intense should our desire for freedom, our desire for awakening be? It should be like the desire we have for water when we're very thirsty. If you always keep this in mind, you will accomplish much. No matter how long your cultivation of holy dharma goes on, don't give up. These are words from my heart. Keep them carefully. Always keep the inexpressible in mind. And then it concludes with a versified a colophon for the retreat of Karma Vinaya. Uh, his name was Karma Dulwa. Dulwa is the Tibetan for the Vinaya, or the, uh, tre- the uh, uh, teachings on monastic discipline given by the Buddha. My longtime Dharma son. These instructions were composed as they occurred to me by the old father Barwe Dorje at the Lion Fortress Hermitage, which is the uh, retreat facility on the peak of uh, Chodrak, the the mountain on which Chodrak Monastery is uh, seated, a place blessed by Guru Rinpoche. I pray that this may reach the minds of yogins on the path and that it may be properly cultivated or practiced. And Sarvada Kalyanam Bhavantu means may there be uh, all manners of good fortune. Dariti. Kama Kandu. Kama. Yeah. How long? We're supposed to go to four? Yeah. Four. Should we check out something? So we can have half an hour for questions. But what? I forgot to get back to you. You called me something. Yeah. Oh, okay. That book. Oh, yeah. Garland of Jewels. That's it. Yeah, I can't remember. How'd you find that out? <laughs> can't remember. That was it. I knew it had one of those jewels, garlands. They're all, there's, yeah. Don't be shy. Hello, uh, uh, r- hello, Bada Rinpoche and uh, Lama Yisi. Thank you very much for. Uh, giving us this wonderful teaching. Um, 
my question is uh, related to the inner, outer, alternate and expands. Mm. Uh, would you be able to give um, further explanations on what that means? Mm. Uh, it's that related to the uh, Kala Chakra uh, practice. Mm. Thank you. That the Chinang Shensum Yingri Yermedre Sumba Kapsa Chinang Shensum de Chetong Suyena Dungorke Chutsigre. They the Chinang Shensum de Dang Yingri Digi Dungorke Keshare, Kanki Keshare. That the name Sanga Tombochi get an English. I have no idea. It must be a teachings to do with some um, elevated level of Vajrayana practice, um, you know. And certainly, as you say, outer, inner, and alternate are 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 typically Kala Chakra terms. But it's to do with some elevated level of Vajrayana practice about which I know nothing. Good afternoon. It was. Still. No, I'm just giving you our time. <laughs> but I've known him for a long time. Thank you, Rinpoche, for coming to visit. Um, My question is about um, a lot of times we hear about the uh, <coughs> mixing of the guru's mind with your own mind and you know, that. I guess that's it. Um, and it's a little bit hard for I mean, many of us, and maybe me in particular, to kind of separate the kind of the physical or the, the kind of the materialistic view of that and what that, I mean, it, I tend to think of like, so do I have voices in my mind or something, you know, it's just, it's a little hard to grasp. Do you, David? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, are you sure? Quite. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So I guess I'm getting at there's a sense of, um, well, I would like Rinpoche to expand on that. 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 I would like Rinpoche to expand I hear voices over the Nyomba Yorwa. Then they are in Mendos. Mato de Lame took the Rangi Sem Devil Kalasekiana. That de Pena Lob Jong Lamni Hora Tad Masona Kana Kasam and Rostopeke Yonzin Lob Yon Zoya Jig Tang. Tapata Mugu Glamni, then in Tato Nello Gayeshi, one to Chirbuk, Nello Rodachik, then in the Yawa Chamboris, then in Pena Yawa Chambori, Pena, then in Mato, Penta Tayan, Tur, then the Guru Mason Boris, then in Ripet Nala, then in Sobjon, Chabat Pabat, Nike of Penta Tayana Yang. Yang tapi ini kan nyal guna buat itu, masa bayi ni tunjuk ini yang tersikir sana semua ni. Jadi ini cuma orang yang kaya mari, mana tiga orang ni. Cuma dah orang orang dia dah buat dok, jadi mesin dah buat kan dia cikgu juga na, jadi kepecahan dah buat dok juga tu. Asyik ram dah buat dok juga tu, kita orang orang yang hak orang tu. Jadi ini yang tak tenti. Kona tepat mugu ke lam ni, tato kona gonda wajib cek yang berkap sana, lam tau darang sem ia mesin kita yunggi orang is, jadi yunggi yau bagi penda wajib tangan orang cok na cok tu beri is, corang kita la yau bagi sanjek hingbote, cong kun siapa yang ting kanda demba tik jawas. Kurang tak kurang cukup nanti sumbat tato ina 
Jotan Debu ke nelu rete yori, jo mena Debu mijong watang, jo kora norsong ale Debu kora yaga cik ke masih benda wata cende cik kora ngone ke kora ta ngopu ke nesu ke dabo cik chati yori. No ten na ying ke sanje tang ta jebu tamba tamji ke tok seko na yarong. Ah, ta, ta to ke pena che ju ko se ko na yinong. Te yon su to ko tam je te yang. Ko ra ran ki tam ba, nam ba sar ba. Ta ko ra yon chong tam je da tra ba yon te tam je da den ba che ke. Ko ra ta ko ra ran ki na wo che re ti ho ri. Te yin du ka ap sala tam ba la tam ba mendew ka le mendo wa. Ko ra to ke pena se le ke to na samotan. Nongkha tongpa rai, ndi ke kayu di cha ke yana kayu naan de la tongcha khaan yoba di cha saan te ko nongkha la ndhe ndo ya la lehra wundu khas. Tha nghe nghe kayu naan ke tongcha te ee phini ndo te ke du se na ngara tu du to ko na sa wa nyin hiyeng ma ris, yo ma ris. Tongcha te ko na pum cha nongkha tongpa tongpa ta wu se na pumpa te cha salong mewa te naan ke tongcha te ko na ta rangji ke nongkha rangji la ko na Kona iya mi ilan ro sa wari ma to so to la a in de chen nin ro taman di de chen nin kona nre son sing hen da wo one konya yo ma ri si. Te in de pe na jawa tam ji yi si alon na chik sing hen te yang ten de de yi si. Choko ke nga na sanje tam ji ke tok chik wa yin be ke pe na lo jun da wo ta nga na sun da wo chen yin na yang ma ta so si chie wu ke ka sa la ta jom ma rik pa la te yin ni. Nyomong pega wang di chunin kowa la cham debu kapsa la ta kora trima ki debsa wang ri si. Debsa wang ri te trima te cha la de ni te ni kora mix da wo chai ke wang te ni kaya ma ri si. Deba ri ma to ton tam be ki ta sanji ki nyin bo te la chong kun si yon ten kun ne ch re di yo ri si. Te ba ta mogu ki laam ni te ngon di chur yon be kapsa la ten ni Kora chilam yukwa si sozo ke hako, salong ke yon ting ngon du churba si sozo ke hako, cha tamwa ti kora tanda nga ransa ngon sum ke nilu karen tamwa ta du la, tele chepar du pakpa ti ni, kora jyom mi shipa ki yon ting chepar ki mangbo ti ti ni yon tu bu yori isi. Ti ina te 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 ga ta ka ki ke te xie ni, da tu ke te ma li. Allah so. No, ka le ka wori. Well, there are a couple of things um, that it that it uh, it means. I mean, it means one thing, but there are a couple of ways to get at it. First of all, it indicates not so much, uh, look, looking at the first way, it's not so much the result that it indicates, but the process. For example, if you think about somebody who um, completes a, a, some kind of graduated course of Dharma study, like a monastic college or something like that, and comes to an understanding, of Dharma. And you compare that with somebody who does not engage in that kind of uh, academic Dharmic training, but uh, practices Dharma with uh, faith, there's going to be a fundamental difference between them, a difference in the profundity of their understanding. The first person's understanding which may be very precise in terms of their being able to think about it and explain it to others and so on, will be, in a sense, um, two-dimensional in comparison to the other persons. Which is why Guru Rinpoche said, it is through failing to recognize this single thing that even great pundits remain utterly deluded. Now, having said that, I have to say to you, Rimshe said, that I ha really have the same question 
about the image uh, that you have. Because when I think mixing my mind with the mind of my guru, does that mean like mixing the steamed milk with the coffee and a cappuccino? Or is it more like the way you'd mix the sauce over the ice cream in order to make a sundae? You know, I mean, these are the kind of things that occur to me le legitimately when I entertain this concept. But I'll, give, I'll try to give you a, an idea of it uh, with the following. And it, what it means is, if we go back to the basics, a basic idea of Dharma, one of the basic ideas is that your Buddha nature is perfect, which is why we call your nature Buddha nature. Your Buddha nature is perfect in what we could call two ways. It's perfect in that it uh, already has all possible qualities. Everything good that could possibly exist is already present within your Buddha nature. And it's perfect in a second way in that um, there is nothing wrong with it. It, Buddha nature has no flaws. The, your Buddha nature itself has no defects, flaws, or limitations whatsoever. So it's perfect in what it is and perfect in what it is not or what it is without. And the, we, even though we don't necessarily experience this, we believe in it as Buddhists because we believe based on both Buddhist statements and scientific evidence that there can be no result without a cause. And we believe in the perfection of the Buddha's awakening. So therefore, there has to be a basic nature that already has that perfection for that awakening to have occurred since if the awakening were the result of the path as a cause and not as a condition, it would have to be impermanent. We don't believe that. So the, the Buddha is the proof of Buddha nature. If this is true, as we believe, that our basic nature is perfect, merely in some way that is hard for us to understand concealed from itself, then this means that the mind of the Buddha, what we call a Dharmakaya, the mind of any holy or awakened being, is identical to the nature of our mind. It has to be. Because they are only good qualities and no defects. And the nature of our mind is only good qualities and no defects. There can't be two different such natures because then they would both have to be lacking something that the other has, and we don't believe that. Or they would both have to be limited in some way that the other isn't, and we don't believe that. So therefore, the mind of the Buddha and uh, your mind have to be indistinguishably identical. Now, if we go back to what this perfection of the mind consists of, it can be proven through either uh, exploration in meditation or even through analysis if necessary that the mind is simply an emptiness that knows. All things are empty. But the mind, any mind, is a distinct phenomenon, distinct from other phenomena, in that among empty phenomena, it is an emptiness that knows. That's what, why we define We call it a mind. And since that is fundamentally what a mind is, that must therefore be that Buddha nature. That emptiness that knows. That must be what Buddha nature is. Because Buddha nature must be fundamental to be unchanging and intrinsic and all that other of good stuff. So if the mind is just emptiness that knows, 
Emptiness definitely can mix with emptiness. Empty space can mix with empty space. For example, if I pour the empty space from my cup into another cup, who can say that they're not the same? To put it another way, the space that is within my cup, if my cup breaks, we would say mixes with the space outside the cup. But in fact, there's nothing mixing. All that's happened is an apparent barrier between the two has disappeared. And in fact, it's only apparent because the, the cup itself is only something within space as well. So even scientists could not say that this is a form of mixing, so to speak, that does not occur. In illustration of this, we find in Dharma the words, all Buddhas are one in the expanse of wisdom. Now one here means that there are no distinctions within or this uh, nature. Our isolation, our sense of separateness and so forth is all a product of the veils or obscurations uh, that um, inhibit or temporarily prevent our recognition of our own nature. So the mixing of the mind of your guru with your mind is not really anything mixing with anything. It is simply the removal of the appearance of separation, barrier uh, between them. Nevertheless, I have to caution you that this cannot be achieved through talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> In the so, I, I mean, this is explained, um, among other places, by Maitreya in the Uttara Tantra Shastra, where he says, because the um, Sambuddhakaya, don't confuse that with Sambhogakaya, it will be explained in a second, um, is all pervasive because um, there are no distinctions within uh, suchness or that and because there are uh, evident potentials um, it is uh, it can be inferred that all beings possess Buddha nature the first of these um, is that the Sambuddhakaya, the body of perfect awakening, uh, really refers to the Dharmakaya. And that uh, state uh, is, as we've seen, simply an emptiness uh, that knows. And uh, since emptiness is all pervasive, then that emptiness that knows uh, must be the nature of each and every mind. It must pervade in the sense of be present within uh, or as the nature of each and every mind. Secondly, there can be no distinctions within that nature. Because of what it is, there can't be a better or worse uh, emptinesses that know. One mind can't have more emptiness that knows than another mind because it is, it is too basic, too fundamental to admit of such distinctions. And the third thing is that beings demonstrate visibly various, in various ways the potential for awakening through dissatisfaction with suffering uh, in all the different ways that we, uh, that we uh, demonstrate 
capacity. Dila, Sitaramsha long chit down a pensare. Yeah, the way Sitaramsha explained this third one is the fact that we are never satisfied is proof that we're capable of perfection. Because we're not satisfied because we know we, we could do better. The fact that we're, not, we're never satisfied is proof that we're capable of perfection. So really, this mind, the, what we're calling the mind of the guru, the mind of the Buddha, is actually inseparable from you. It's with you all the time. The fact that we're unaware of it is for a reason that is, it is analogous to the fact that we can see our own fronts but not our own backs. Have you seen your own back, David? You, you need two. Two mirrors. What? It was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to follow that with uh, Well, not exactly that, but... Um, so since emptiness is, you know, completely inconceptual, completely non-conceptual, we have no way of kind of sensing what emptiness is. It's you mean it's, no, it's not an object of concepts? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so therefore, the only thing that we can kind of know about mixing the guru's mind with our mind is something to do with the knowing part, right? Or the awareness, the luminosity, the, that part of the mind, right? Is that true? You're asking that? I'm at, um, okay. Well, um, All right. that's leading to the question. That's leading to the question. Okay. Do you, well, let me lead with the leader, and then we'll get back to you. With And you can... Uh, the, the, there's not much more to it. it it's <laughs> really just that... So the knowing part uh, is wisdom and compassion. Okay. <laughs> Tongja de Tony in the Loy Yule de Paris. The Tony de Loy Yul my embossong with us. Then the Nazo ke 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 sem gozong gozong topa de Salcha conarepe. Salton son de Jopanaki go. Um, to take a tongue but don't sang it. Kaya meba not on them level. Um, not really. It's not like, well, it, we're back on the leader. We didn't get to the. Um, when we talk about the mind as having two aspects an aspect of emptiness and an aspect of cognitive lucidity, um, it is because in order to just, they're isolates in terms of our conceptualization of. They're conceptual isolates, but they're not two different things. So therefore, it's not the case that the mind comes to recognize its own lucidity without recognizing the emptiness. And therefore, in the same way, the mind's recognition of its own emptiness is not the discovery of any kind of nothingness or blankness. The lucidity is the emptiness, and the emptiness is the lucidity. <laughs> That's why Rongjun Dorje wrote, um, it does not exist and has not and is not seen by any any of the victors or by even the victors. Um, it does not not exist and is the basis of samsara and nirvana. And this is not a, a contradiction or you could say paradox. It is the unified middle way. May I recognize uh, that dharmata that is the mind's nature. What this means is that what, what in language we call the mind's emptiness is simply a name or concept for the fact that the, the mind is not something. Um, but it, 
it is would be equally wrong to say it's nothing because it's what experiences everything. If you read the very beginning of the Jewel Ornament of Liberation, the very beginning of the, the, the introduction, what's usually thought of as the beginning of the first chapter, but kind of goes before any of the chapters, where Lord Gampopa describes the uh, nature, character, and attributes of samsara and nirvana. Um, it, this will help you understand this. There was one over here. Can you pass the mic? Yeah. Um, I've, I've been taught or understood that the concept uh, dharma da, dharma datu, mm -hmm. basic or primordial space, mm -hmm. is that synonymous with the emptiness that knows? It's it's the the Dharma Datu is the same thing as um what we call the pure mind or the fundamental mind. Um, it's not the same as the delusion or veils that obscure the mind. So that would be synonymous with, with emptiness in the sense of the mind that knows. The, 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 the empty, um, oh, how did you put it? The, what was the term you used? That, the, An emptiness that knows? The emptiness that... An emptiness that, that knows. knows, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what he said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rinpoche, I had a question about being a transparent practitioner, like the teachings talked about. And what the, if you could say something about the difference between that in terms of motivation, being transparent and being um, simply religious. Um, I find myself, um, I came from a theistic background, a lot of us did here in the West, and I find myself sometimes um, progressing in my practice because this is the right thing to do, but I don't think I'm f really convinced. Like, and the motivation should be that, it seems like it should be that I'm convinced of like the truth of the, the common preliminaries. And, but often it seems like um, it's easy, especially when we have um, the trappings of ritual, um, to get kind of lost in your, you think, oh, I need to be doing the right thing, and maybe, you know, instead of being fully convinced. Um, and I guess in my life, the only times I can say I've been fully convinced is when I've had a tragedy like in the family, and it's like falling off the cliff thing, you know. But can you say something about that? Is that clear? ตะเนติเนลุไลเจปามควเวเนโซละเตทอดุญีเนยปากิชินซัมมายันบาโดกโตตองเตเนอาติดุเนยปอเรนัมโตเกโตตองเตนาชิงเกติเชนดากิคุ
ชอบปาเลตันเมบะนําดาเจกเปลาวอริเซงอาราสุกังกะกอมบอริเซงอินตุกาบสลาเปนะชรันเซวะตาบอริโบตอบจุตอบซาบตอบโทตอบเกวะ
So the first one is page nine. Doje Chang, Tilopa Naropa, Marpa Milarepa, Dharma Lord Gampopa, Pagmodrupa, and Lord Jukumba, please bestow upon us the most auspicious blessing of all the Kadri Lamas. By this virtue, may I achieve omniscience by defeating all enemies' confusion. May all who travel on the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind, where it is unborn, may it arise. Where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase higher and higher. I pray that the Lama may have good health. I pray that the Lama may have long life. I pray that your Dharma activities spread far and wide. I pray that I may not be separated from you. As Manjushri, the warrior, realized the ultimate state, and as did Samantabhadra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. By the blessing of the Buddha who attained the three kayas, by the blessing of the truth, the unchanging Dharma as such, by the blessing of the indivisible Sangha order, by the merit I share bear fruit. Page 12, I'm 13. For this realm encircled by snow-covered mountains, you are the source of every benefit and bliss without exception. Tenzin Gyatso, you who are one with Avalokiteshvara, may you remain steadfast until samsara's end. Long life prayer for His Holiness. You who continuously enjoy the mandala of great bliss, Kamapa, great treasury of all Buddha activity, with your heart, sons, and lineage, may you remain in this ocean of existence for kalpas and kalpas. Whoever engages in the essential activity of listening, reflecting, and practicing the secret teachings of your profound speech, may all their practice and study increase like the surging rivers of summer. Unchanging Vidyadara, with mastery over life, Padmakara, Longevity Mother, Mandarava, and your retinue unleash the power of your mind from the expanse of wisdom. Bestow the blessing of the Lama's life being firm. May he pour well a stream of dharmas ripening and freeing Amrita, love and the rest, into the vessels his disciples, beings of foreign lands devoted to virtue. May his life remain firm for a long time. Through the power of dharmata, naturally pure from the start, and of the infallible, multiplicitous interdependence of things, may all the aims of our hopeful aspirations be powerfully achieved without obstacle. Thank you very much. Thank you.